Uh, once again a warm welcome back flight sim and other stuff and it is the tutorial long awaited on the X Touch Mini and the gauges and <laughs> the microphone is working my apologies to anyone that was on the stream earlier this evening and sat around for six minutes watching me go like that <clears throat> Anyway, it's all sorted. Now, there's been a slight delay in me getting this third video out. All I had to do was edit it. And then, immediately after the live stream earlier, uh, made a couple of changes to the tool from Thomas, aka Fanatic. And rather than edit the video in, I decided to do the whole lot from scratch again. So here we go. We are going to be doing programming on the X-Touch Mini from scratch completely from the ground up no coding required it's all going to be drag and drop not going to be doing the LEDs in this lesson that's coming in the next one and what else must I tell you yeah you've got to have the framework already installed in Access and O's and of course you need Access and O's if you haven't got either of those and you've got no idea what I'm talking about go back and look at the first video which is still relevant that will get you up and running and then come back and join us here if you've done all that and you're ready to start let's jump down to the simulator PC and for this example I'm going to be programming um, a gauge for the Cessna and there's a couple of prerequisites we need to do before I get into actually using the uh, X-Touch so and that is in Access and O's. So there are no templates here already. It's a brand new aircraft to me. And I need to set a couple of things up. First thing, I'm going to go to scripting. Go to the RPN scripts editor. Uh, manage script groups. And I need to create a new script group for the aircraft I'm working on now. And in my case, it's the Cessna. 152. If I was doing the Spitfire or I was doing the Phoenix, I would call it something appropriate for them. For now though, as we're just kicking off, why don't you join me and do the 152. So click 152 and add. Close that. Now I go down to the X-Touch script down at the bottom here and I find the per aircraft template. Double click this and I'm going to rename it by taking out the per aircraft X touch auto. I'm going to replace these X's here with C152. And I'm going to add two layers. Might not get around to using the second one, but I'll put two in for now. And then I need in this drop down list before I do anything else, make sure I select that C152 folder I've just created. Once I've done that, press save as new. And that's that job done. Now I can go to my templates and apply a template to this aircraft. And the template I want is the X-Touch template, which you would have installed already as per video one. Click apply. Replace. Uh, there's my template. And finally, the scripting. For the aircraft automated scripts, the script I want to automatically run on this aeroplane is the C152 X-Touch Auto, make it a one shot and update. I should get rid of this uh, fly-by-wire one. And that's it. Close. Press in any of the buttons on the X-Touch and now activated in Access and O's. 
And so you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to enable the desktop FIP. And there we have the gauge we're going to program. Now comes the magic and <laughs> the latest update um, from Thomas. Let's move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. I will put a link to this in the show notes below, but if you go to this website, you're going to find the quickest and easiest way to program up the X-Touch Mini. Well, I say the quickest and easiest way, there may be an even faster way, which I might talk about next week. Work in progress. For now, though, this is pretty simple. So I want to program these buttons. Uh, let's say I want to program this button to be a battery. So I click on it and I want this to be my battery on and off. So I'll give it a label, battery, and down over here in my scripts library, this is going to work for all the default aircraft and it may even work for some of the more advanced aircraft the commercial ones that you may have purchased. I will talk about that a little bit later on in the video, but for now, we're dealing with the C-152, so let's just stay with this. It's a default aircraft, and all the scripts are already provided. So I can just type in here, BAT, and filter. And so you can see we've got the aircraft electrical events, open that up, and we've got a toggle master battery. And I can just, move this over. Remember to commit the changes before you do another button. And that's it. I'm going to program some other buttons up in a minute but let's test this right from the very start. So I'll go up to here, so I go to download layer file, save it as, and I'm going to save it in documents, lobbies, access and O's, scripts, X touch gauge. So once again, documents, Lorbiz access and O files scripts X touch gauge and I need to save this and I need to save this as X touch underscore and then my aircraft 1C152 because that's how I edited the auto script for the aircraft. Remember I replaced the three X's so in this case it was C152 underscore zero because it's the first layer. The first layer is zero, second layer is one, etc, etc. And it'd be dot text. I don't have to put that in because it should put that in automatically. Save! And the gauge will update if I disconnect and reconnect access and O's from the simulator. You can see there is my bat. And if I go back to the simulator now, if I was to press that button on the X-Touch gauge, the battery's live and the battery's off. Of course, if you can't reach over to the X-Touch because you're doing everything on the computer screen, you can just press the button with the mouse here. On, off. Like I said, we're not covering the lights on the buttons in this tutorial. We're just going through putting functions on the buttons. So let's add a lot more to this now. Move that out of the way, go back to the web page. I want a battery button there. Um, what should I put here? I could put strobes. S-T-R-O-B-E. Filter. Strobes, toggle. There's the strobe light. So click on the button again. Give it a title. S-T-R-O-B-E. Strobe and drag the strobes onto there. Commit the changes. Always remember to commit the changes because if I was to drag something across on this short clip, let's do what the landing lights. If I was to just click out of this now and go to another button, when I go back, I've lost it. So you must commit the changes before you leave this screen. Short clip. Uh, land in LGT. And in the filter, search for land in. F 
filter. Landing lights toggle. Now you can see I'm using a toggle button here but there are buttons here for landing lights on and landing lights off. If I wanted to do that we could put landing on on this screen can make changes and the bottom button here I could put land off and drag the landing lights off into that one. Commit the changes. So you can toggle or you can do on and off. The options down here. Landing lights, what else can I put on? Nav lights. A beacon. Um, try nav lights. LDT. Nav. Oh, let's try lights. LIG lights. Beacon lights. Nav lights on, nav lights off, nav lights set. Oh, I don't see a nav lights toggle. That's an interesting one. I do have. I don't have beacon toggle either, so that would have to be. Oh, toggle nav lights. There we go. And I can fill out these. Now let's talk about the rotaries. So this first rotary, I want this to be the barometer setting. I want to go left and right. So set barrow. Now, weird thing here, there are lots of barometers. There are lots of barometer scripts inside the default, but there is not one. For increasing and decreasing the barometer because they've actually used the technical phrase so search for KOHL okay so to decrease the barometer I'm going to drag the decrease into the rotary left and I'm going to drag the increase to the rotary right commit the changes so there's my barrow so now let's look at doing the radio and we'll look at COM1. Now on the radio stack, of course, the control knob for the radio is a dual rotary. It has an inner knob and an outer knob. And I could accomplish something similar in here by using a shift key. So when I hold down a particular button on the yoke, for example, when I turn this rotary here, um, it will be the outer knob. And when I release the button on the yoke it will the same rotary will be controlling the inner one but that's for a more advanced script for now I'm just going to use this knob here to be the outer one and this knob here to be the inner rotary on the radio controller so we'll call this com one outer for example and com one inner to program this let's search for com one in the filter and aircraft radio navigation events com one uh, that's not there so let's just search for com That's better. And if I scroll right down here, we can see COM radio fractional decrease and whole decrease and increase. So I am on the outer, which is the whole. So we'll use whole decrease and put that on rotary left. And whole increase I will put on rotary right. Commit the changes. For the inner, I'm going to use decrease with carry and increase with carry on the left and right. The difference of using with carry and without carry is when I turn the inner knob down through zero, it will remove one from the hole 
and work its way down. So I can keep twiddling the inner one to decrease the frequency. Or you can have it without carry, in which case the inner knob just does the decimals and has no effect on the whole, and the outer knob only controls the whole. So the choice is yours, but I quite like it this way around. You'll see it when we do a test in a minute. Commit the changes. Now there is also a COM swap, isn't there? So when I change the COM radio frequency, I'm doing the standby frequency. So what I want to do now is look for the swap button. And COM1 radio swap. I'm going to put that on the push button of that rotary. Drag and drop it to the key down. It changes. And I can do the same for the navigation. I can put the navigation in and outer on the next ones. I don't have to do it all now. I'm going to leave you to have a play with it. And it's that simple. So let's download that layer now. Save it as C1520.txt. Do I want to replace it? Yes. Close the browser down that will not be updated until I disconnect and reconnect Lorby's access and those from the simulator green button green button and there we are now if I turn the battery on things are live if I turn the barometer we should see the altitude change down and up and for com one watch the let's zoom in so you can see there, there's me controlling the buttons with the mouse this is not very comfortable but now look at this turn that right turn it left right left and then the swap by pressing the button how easy is that guys and you can use this for any aircraft any default aircraft all the scripts are there let's take you one step further in this lesson and this <laughs> this will blow your minds I think these access and those scripts that I can see in here at the moment, or all these scripts that you see here at the moment, are the default ones that are supplied by access and those, Sobo, etc., Microsoft. Plus the X-Touch mini gauge ones, which were automatically added by Thomas. But I've got loads of other scripts. I've got scripts that I've downloaded from flightsim.to for my stream deck, for example. And Gonzalez done a load of fantastic Stream Deck profiles. And all of those come with Access and O scripts. And I can use those in this program as well. How do I do it? Well, I need to load all the Access and O scripts that are inside Access and O's. Those that you've uploaded or those you may have even created yourself if you're a script writer. So I will click this button here and you've got to navigate and load up the right file you don't have to remember anything just right click in here and select paste because we've already put the shortcut in for you so you don't have to remember just click open and now look what you can see loads of scripts here these are for the fly-by-wire I've got some down here for the Phoenix that I've been working with. If I open that up, there's all the Phoenix controls. And again, I can drag and drop these onto here. If I want to make a Phoenix panel, I drag and drop it across. And you can search. Whoops. So I typed in Fen, now I've just got the Fenix scripts, 
And now <laughs> you can type in APU. And now I can see the Phoenix APU. Isn't this amazing? Clear. One final one. So let's do a layer change and we'll call it quits. I will click this button and I want this to go to the next layer. So we'll scroll down, we'll find the X Touch, whoa, we'll find the X Touch scripts right at the bottom, and in there is layer set. Cool that and we'll say layer two. Okay. And now that will take us to the next layer. We need to create the next layer, so I haven't done that yet. So I'm going to import a blank file. We'll use the Xtouch layer template. And this is going to be my layer 2. I will give it a label. Layer 2. And this button here is going to be a uh, 1. And I would drag the layer set over to here. And this time I want to go back to the first layer, which is the xtouch underscore c152 underscore zero. So it's the zero that goes in there. Commit changes. Download the layer and save it as, and I'm going to save it as c152 underscore one dot text. And now those buttons, if I go to the sim, I disconnect and reconnect access and O's because we cache everything. There's layer one at the moment and if I was to press the button that's marked layer two, it takes me to layer two and then layer two, the same button should take me back to layer one. I've been through it very quickly. I don't think it's difficult. If you've got any questions, feel free to jump onto Discord and uh, ask away. I'm going to talk about the lights next time. And there may be another update which is going to make this even easier. But what I've showed you is always going to be there. Nothing I've shown you is going to disappear. You'll be able to now program up this X-Touch for any aircraft. And once you've done it, why not share with us? Let us see your files. Upload your files. Um, go to Discord and let us have a look. Or if you're feeling particularly adventurous, why not upload them to flightsim.to. Well, that's it. Um, sorry it was a little bit later than advertised, but as I said, this is constantly moving and constantly updating. As usual, enjoy your flying. Thank you very much. Take care and good night.